This video is a tutorial of the RightsLogic Extranet tool, where NBC Universal licensees can upload royalty statements, submit forecasts, and view the status of their account. This video will focus on how to view invoice information and upload royalty statements. If you'd like more detailed information on these processes, please refer to the RightsLogic Extranet how-to guide provided to you by NBC Universal. Financial Summary the Financial Summary tab displays invoice information for each contract the licensee has with NBC Universal. You can use the drop down menus at the top of the screen to filter the information displayed by account manager, contracting entity, or contract number, and selecting Search. In the table below, the parent rows will display the basic information about the contract, including the licensee name, contract number, account manager, contracting entity, licensee period, which is the start and end date of your contract, deal status, and deal currency. Select the arrow to the left of the parent row to expand and view all invoices for that contract. Each row represents an invoice. You can view invoices by clicking on the PDF icon in each row. Make sure your pop-up blocker is turned off or the PDF will not be displayed. The invoice number column displays the invoice number. The due date column displays the date the invoice payment is due to NBC Universal. The invoice column displays the total amount invoiced to the licensee. The adjustments column shows any adjustments that have been made on the invoice. The cash column will reflect any payments made towards the invoice so far. If any payments have been made, the check slash WT number field will show all applicable check numbers or wired transfer numbers. Lastly, the Due Amount field will show the remaining balance on the invoice. For more information about the fields displayed in the invoice rows, please review the How-To Guide. Royalty The Royalty tab displays information about previously submitted royalty statements and is where you will submit new royalty statements. Like the Financial Summary tab, you can use the drop-down menus at the top of the screen to filter the information. The table below lists royalty information as it pertains to each contract. Each parent row displays the same basic information about a contract, including the licensee, account manager, contracting entity, contract number, license period, and deal currency. Make sure that when you are submitting royalty statements, they are being submitted under the correct contract. In order to see the royalty statements that have already been submitted for a contract, you will need to expand the parent row to reveal the child row or rows. Royalty Statement Submission To submit a new royalty statement, start by making sure the applicable contract row is expanded and that you can see the Add New Record icon. You can expand and collapse the child rows by selecting and deselecting the arrow to the left of the row. When the arrow expands, you'll see two child rows appear. The first row has a plus sign icon and says Add New Record. Select this. A new child row will be created and you will select the statement period for which you are reporting the royalties under Statement Period. The Statement Value and Submission Status fields will auto-populate after the royalty statement is submitted. You do not need to take any action on them. Under File Template, make sure that the field is set as Default File Template. You will use the Royalty Statement template to complete the royalty information for a given period. You can download the Royalty Statement template from the Utilities tab in the Extranet. When filling out a royalty statement, there are particular guidelines to follow. Let's use an example for discussing how to fill it out. For the following guidelines, let's assume you are granted the rights to Girls Pajamas for the Despicable Me franchise for France and Germany. First, each row in the royalty statement should contain only one value for each applicable column. When populating the assets, use a valid name from the list provided to you by NBC Universal. This list can be found in a tab of your royalty statement template file. If you are licensing a franchise, when populating the asset field, please enter either the most recent theatrical release from the franchise or the title of that franchise asset in its name. In our example, you would either use the most recent theatrical release, Despicable Me 3, 
or Despicable Me franchise asset. Please do not input an asset for a prior theatrical release, such as Minions. You can only have one asset per row in your royalty statement submission. The licensed articles you input must also match the spelling and wording that is in the NBC Universal list, which can also be found in a tab of your royalty statement template file. For example, be sure to use Pajamas G, as it appears in the licensed articles list. Do not use Girls Pajamas. Like assets, you can only have one licensed article per row in your royalty statement submission. When populating the territory field, use the territory in which the product was sold rather than the licensee's home country. The territory used should match a listed territory from the NBC Universal list, which can be found in a tab of the royalty statement. Also, there can only be one territory per row in your royalty statement submission. For example, if you are reporting royalties for girls' pajamas sold in France and Germany, the royalties for each territory's sales must be completed on different lines. The channel type you input must also match the spelling and wording that is in the NBC Universal list. For example, be sure to use Amazon.com as it appears in the channel type list. Like assets, licensed articles, and territory, you can only have one channel per row in your royalty statement submission. When populating the assets, licensed articles, territory, and channel type fields, use valid names from the lists provided to you by NBC Universal. These lists can be found in the various tabs of your royalty statement template file. The values for reporting period start and reporting period end must be in the format of month month, day day, year 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 year. These dates should match the statement period you entered in the royalty tab. For more detailed information on the fields in the royalty template, please refer to your how-to guide. Once all required fields are completed and the royalty statement is correctly completed, save the file on your computer. When naming your royalty statement file, please include the contract ID and the statement reporting period in the file name. For example, this is the statement file for contract number 120-52659 and the royalty reporting period of July 1, 2016 through September 30, 2016. The file name should not contain any special characters and must be in .xls or .xlsx format to be accepted by the extranet. Back in the extranet, under Select File Heading, click Browse and find the saved royalty statement from your computer. The file name should now appear under Select File. To post the royalty statement, click on the Save icon to the far right. As a next step, click the Validate button to validate the royalty statement. If there are no errors, you will see a confirmation message and the submission status will be processing. If there are errors in the validation or if the upload is unsuccessful, you will see an error message with information on why the royalty statement was rejected. Please see the RightsLogic Extranet how-to guide for a detailed list of all possible error messages and steps to resolve them. Submissions the Submissions tab is a read-only tab that contains a history of all royalty statement, forecast, and contact detail submissions you have made. At the top of the section, you can filter by submission type, status, and date range. To view royalty submissions that have been accepted by NBC Universal that were submitted during a particular time frame, select Sales Submission in the Processed Status from this date to this date. You can now see all submissions made, the contract name and contract number for which the royalty statements were submitted, the date of the submission, the submission status, the user who made the submission, the statement period for which the royalties were submitted, and in the far right column, the value of the royalties submitted. This concludes the training video on the RightsLogic Extranet royalty statement submission functionality. For more information on managing your account or submitting forecasts, please view the other videos in this series. As always, you can refer to your how-to guide for more detailed information on the RightsLogic Extranet functionality.